Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today we're talking about e-bikes. Why would a prepper care about an e-bike? Why would a prepper care about something which could run indefinitely on the power of the sun alone? Hmm, I think I can think of a few reasons why. With the price of gas skyrocketing, not just for SHTF, but also just for modern day commuting, you can save yourself a lot of money if you can pair your e-bike with a good solar panel charging system. Now the system that we're gonna show you today is built for off-grid, okay? It's built for rugged backcountry use. This combination of e-bike and solar panel are built to withstand the elements, okay? These are the toughest built e-bike and solar panel combo that you're gonna find. We're gonna show you how you can charge that just using this and a simple Gensun Boost controller. First, I wanna talk about the pros and cons of why you would want an e-bike, okay? So e-bikes have a lot of benefits. They're stealthy, okay? They're better than bikes because you can have the pedal assist. So if you're going uphill, and we all know that calories are in short supply after disaster strikes, an e-bike is going to allow you to get into a lot of places that a vehicle won't even allow. Especially one like this that has the great suspension, it has the mid-drive, motor so that's going to allow you to just have more off-road capability bikes can go a lot of places where cars simply can't of course you can recharge this but in order to recharge it while you're on the go you need something that is lightweight and portable and again built to resist the elements so right here we have a power film solar panel these are the toughest built solar panels in the world they're made in America, okay? We torture test this thing to hell. You can shoot it full of holes, you can kick it around, you can scrunch it all up, you can throw it against the wall, you can beat it till it's black and blue, and this thing will still put out power. It's a thin film amorphous silicon technology. It's actually not new, it's been around for a couple decades. So these definitely are more expensive than your standard monocrystalline panels that you'll find on AliExpress. You know, you can go on Amazon, they show you these foldable 200 watt solar panels. Uh, you take them out and sure enough, uh, either they're gonna break down within a year or so, or they're just not gonna give you the output power that they claim to possess. So you gotta be very careful when choosing a solar panel. Power film, it's a high upfront investment. The number one benefit of a power film solar panel is that it's going to function in low light conditions. A lot of those monocrystalline panels, if you were to say have a bike trailer system and you had one of those panels laying flat on your trailer and you were say uh, biking through canopies of trees, well that partial shading is going to drastically reduce the efficiency of those solar panels. However, with power film, the way that they're wired and configured, this is going to perform very well in low light conditions partially shaded conditions, it doesn't matter. Even if it's overcast, this thing will still put out a lot more power. The only problem is, as you can see, it takes up a larger surface area. For example, a 60 watt monocrystalline panel will only take up about half the space you see here. So this requires more space, but like I said, guys, you get what you pay for. These are Rambo e-bikes, by the way. They're, in my opinion, the ultimate off-grid e-bike, which is why they're the only e-bikes that we sell at CanadianPreparedness.com and uh, they're also the most badass looking. So what you need to charge your e-bike, you're gonna need a power film solar panel, you're going to need your e-bike battery, and most importantly, you're gonna need this thing called a boost controller because these batteries are 48, 14.5 amps uh, by 48 volts for a combined total of about 700 watt hours in this battery pack. Now this is a 60 watt solar panel and this puts out, I believe 15.4 volts. So that's not enough to charge this. So what we need to do then is we need to increase the voltage using a boost controller. And that's where this thing comes in. This is going to reduce the amperage but it's going to intensify the voltage outputs. So this is a 54.2 volt lithium Genesun boost charge controller. Now we sell all of these components at canadianpreparedness.com. You can get the bike, 
you can get the charge controller and the solar panel if you're filthy rich. You can also get your own Genesun Boost charge controller from the Genesun website and you can mix and match that. Now, we have ours pre-wired. They also have the right adapter to plug into your battery already built onto these things, okay? I would recommend a 120 watt power film solar panel. That way it's just gonna charge a bit quicker. Charging a battery of this size is gonna take a while, okay? 120 watt solar panel, uh, which has been reduced in the amperage, is probably gonna take a couple days to fully charge something like this. So let's say you were doing some backcountry camping. You will get to your destination, and then you'll be able to put your solar panel onto your e-bike battery. And if you're being conservative with using your pedal assist, or maybe you have full throttle on your bike, then of course it's gonna last you a long time. Uh, this is meant to supplement your usage as opposed to fully recharge the battery on a daily basis. It's meant to trickle charge. But regardless, you're gonna get that extra power you need to get up those tough hills, those inclines, especially if you're carrying a large load. So a system like this is ultra lightweight. So basically with all of this, you have the ability to go further, to go through rougher terrain, uh, to carry larger loads without burning as many calories. Essentially what we're doing is we're taking the energy from the sun, instead of using our food rations, to power the bicycle, we're instead using the power of the sun. So this is where the survival aspect of something like this comes in very handy. Now, if you want, you can always bring a battery pack. You could charge this via AC. But as my friend Survival Tech Nord says, it makes no sense to charge, to take a DC solar panel convert it to AC and then convert it back into a DC form for this battery. Instead, it makes much more sense to use that boost controller to take the power directly from the solar panel, put it right into the battery pack without the use of an inverter. That way you don't get that conversion loss. So this makes the most sense. Now my buddy over at the Survival Tech Nord YouTube channel recommends two 60 watt solar panels. This boost controller is taking your 15 volts that you're getting from your solar panel and it's turning that into 54 volts. Now, without getting overly technical, what this means is that it has to reduce the overall amperage. So, if you double up on the solar panels, that's going to increase the overall amperage and thus increase the amount of power that's going into your e-bike battery. So you can do it in a couple different ways. You can just get a 120 watt solar panel and it's going to uh, modulate that to get it at the right voltage or you can get 260 watts. He recommends 260 watts. Now, I hope you're sitting down because I'm gonna tell you how much the price of all these things are. Rambo e-bikes start at around $2,000 USD and they can go all the way up to about $10,000 USD if you're talking about things like the Megatron or the Venom, which have dual 1000 watt motors. These things have an insane range, they go insanely fast and they got an insane amount of power. Just for the solar panel itself, those are gonna range from anywhere from $500 to $2,000 if you're talking about the camouflage version. Now we had these camo versions specially made from Powerfilm, we have a limited amount in the 30 watt, 60 watt, and 120 watt. They're all 15.4 volts, which is the most versatile. Now you can get them in a 30 volt, which may be even better for an e-bike uh, configuration. But then of course, uh, you're going to require, if you wanted to use that panel with other devices, you might need some sort of down regulation in order to uh, modulate that power supply so you're not you know, frying your electronics. So we would recommend just getting the standard 15.4 volts uh, panels in the 30, 60, or 120 watt configurations. And uh, that's gonna allow you to do other things. So you can charge your battery packs, your Energy Apex, your Energy Flex, the EcoFlow Delta. All of those battery packs you can charge with this. Super lightweight, super durable. There's nothing else like these on the market. But essentially what I wanted to 
communicate to you today was that all you need to charge your e-bike is a solar panel, a boost controller, and your e-bike battery. And I do believe that this type of technology has a place in preparedness. Just for the stealth factor alone, being able to uh, navigate through a disaster region is gonna be challenging because of course, you know, you're gonna be talking about traffic jams, there's gonna be obstructions on roadways, and getting through those areas in a car is going to be challenging if not impossible. But you can navigate those tight spaces with a bike and you could do it quietly. And having a high powered e-bike in the 750 watt and higher range is gonna allow you to you know, have a little bit of power in case you need to get yourself out of a bad situation. If you want more information about the specs of these bikes, you can go check them out on our website. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Canadian Prepper out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, where you'll find high quality survival gear at the best prices, no junk, and no gimmicks. Use discount code PREPPINGGEAR for 10% off. Don't forget, the strong survive, but the prepared thrive. Stay safe.